Hi everyone. So Diablo 4 is out, everyone is blasting the game and I keep getting the same questions over and over. In particular about how to progress, what to do after campaign. So I figured I can answer that in this video. So I have been blasting this game quite a lot already. As you can see, I have a level 100 hardcore rogue. I also started some other characters already. And there are definitely some things you can do better or worse if you want to try to be efficient. So number one is that you have to finish the campaign when you start your first character. You have to do the campaign once and you cannot progress to the higher difficulties if you have not finished it. So this is really the main objective. So when you start out with a character, you will focus mostly on the Act 1 campaign, Act 2, etc. You just go through it. You can kind of do it in the order that you want for the early acts, but generally you want to go act by act, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to the end. So as you go, the minimum levels of the zones will increase. So in the lower world tiers, monsters have like a vastly different minimum level. So it starts at level one here in Fracture Peaks. Most people have seen that from the open betas, etc. And then it kind of increases counterclockwise. So Skulls Glen is like level 10 to 15. And then Dry Steps is like level 20, 25. And then you have like Kajistan a bit like 30, 40. And Harazza like 40, 45. So it kind of like increases like this, and you go all the way around the world here. Now, the thing is that if you play only through the campaign, you will actually be underleveled, and it might become quite difficult later. You don't want to be underleveled by too much, because bosses are going to get hard, the fights are slow, or you might not even be able to do it. So you can do some side content while doing this. In particular, I recommend doing the first Renown objective in each of the regions at the very least. So if you press the Renown, we have the first skill point that you get for, I believe, only 200 Renown that you have to unlock, which is not really much. You see that you get a lot from simply the, the Altars and from maybe doing a side dungeon here and there or a Stronghold or two. And the Waypoints, they give a lot of Renown. So you get the first skill point almost by default. And you can't even think about getting the second or even the third Renown in a region here and there. The second is quite nice for the potion, at least early in the progression. You do rely on potions quite a lot, so it may be worth picking up one or two potion slots. And then, of course, you get another skill point here at Renown 3. Renown 3 does take a lot longer than just the first one or two. So you might only want to do this if you really have like a, a long stretch of being underleveled in regards to the campaign quests. And then you can go around maybe for like an hour or two, or try to do some side content, and you get at least some Renown done here. But for the most part, you want to level your Renown kind of equally in each of the regions because the first rewards are very easy to get and they're also more powerful than later rewards. And this also ties in with the strategy that you're going to continue later after the campaign, which is going for the full Renown completion. So once you are around level 40, 45, 50, you will have completed the campaign and then you, it's time to go Nightmare Difficulty. So Nightmare Difficulty starts at level 50, it ends at level 70, and you can unlock it a little bit earlier if you want to. So you can just go to difficulty 2. In the world tier statue you can change it. And then you have the capstone dungeon that you have to finish. Which is in Kyovashat. It's the Cathedral of Light. This is here. Up there. So it doesn't show right now because I'm on the wrong difficulty. But looking at the difficulty overview you can see Nightmare starts at 50 and goes to 70. And then you have Torment 70+. plus. So this is where you're going to spend most of your progression. In general, you want to advance to the higher difficulty as soon as possible, if you can handle it. So there are two main reasons for that. One is the higher XP. You can see here, monsters give 100% increased experience, up from 20% or 0 from the first two difficulties. And on Torment, you have 200% bonus XP. So you get massively more experience for monsters of the same level, just by being in the higher difficulties. And on top of this, you can also find more items. So there's a unique item that starts dropping, there's even more uniques in Torment. And you also have the sacred items and the ancestral items. So these are those like glowing items here. Effectively, they have a higher maximum item power range. So I don't know exactly, but sacred is something like around 600 to 720 or so. And then ancestral is something like around 680 to 820. So you can get much higher item powers and there's a different item stat breakpoints at certain uh, item power levels. So for example, at 625 and at 725, all the stats on items can increase to the next tier. 
So in general, you just get very powerful items. And the thing is that the items that you find in Nightmare and Torment difficulties actually do not have a certain level requirement anymore. But the level requirement is always going to be exactly your character's level when you find it. So you see this here that some of these items can be quite low. This is level 91, this is level 82, this is level 73. These are exactly the levels I found those items on. And some of these items are much higher. Here's a 98, for example. And this means that, for example, compared to trying to fight high-level monsters in the first world tiers, like, for example, people might remember the Quarter Garden Farm. Yeah, it's the stronghold of the corpses uh, that people were doing in the Sora Slam and in the open beta. And you were able to find the items that were higher than your character's level and you couldn't equip them. But this actually does not happen in the later levels. So as soon as you go to Nightmare Difficulty or to Torment Difficulty, you can find those sacred and accessible items and get a pretty massive power spike immediately once they drop. So even though Nightmare says 50 to 70, you can go there earlier and you can find sacred items that don't require level 50. So as long as you can kind of handle it, even if it's a bit slow, it might be worth doing it because you can get those sacred items and you find them pretty early, pretty quickly. As soon as you fight a few elite packs or something like that, you maybe do a dungeon or two, you will find some of these items and you'll get a massive power spike at that point. In my opinion, the best way to profit from those higher difficulties, especially early when you're still underleveled and kind of weak, is to do either strongholds, because strongholds actually override the minimum level of monsters. They are always plus two of your character. So even if you're like level 40 or something, you go into nightmare difficulty and the stronghold monsters will be 42 instead of 53. So uh, they are much easier, but monsters below level 50 cannot drop sacred items. At the very least though, you can profit from the higher XP and gold values. And another thing you can do is easy outdoor content. So outdoor content is generally easier than, for example, dungeons and especially nightmare dungeons. So you want to kind of stay away from those while you are really underleveled and really undergeared and instead just focus on those quests. They help you with the renown as well. They give you some rewards here and there. They can give you some potions, some items. So it's kind of nice and they bring you closer to the goal of finishing the renown everywhere. So side quests and strongholds are the easiest content to do when you're underleveled. And you can combine this with the waypoints and the altars that uh, you can kind of just find on the way, especially if you have the map open on another screen or so. I have that link in the description. And you bet basically get like half or, or even more of the total renown already from just doing these kind of things, at least a little bit. You don't have to do every single side quest. Usually like 10, 15 or so per region is fine, as long as you do all the other stuff. So especially once you enter Nightmare Difficulty, you want to fully focus on Renown all the way until you have done everything. You want to collect those skill points, you want to collect those Paragon points later, they give you a pretty decent power spike, and it will help you all the way from there to level 100 and beyond, basically. So you want to do the Renown at some point, because it's free character power, and character power is limited in this game, so you want to try to get as much as you can. And there are two different strategies here. So if you focus on only one character, which I guess most people will do, you want to level all of the regions kind of equally. So you start with Renown 1 everywhere, then Renown 3 everywhere, and then Renown 5 everywhere, and you go all around. And you do 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and then 3, 3, 3, 3, etc. The reason for that is that these have the biggest power spikes, so the skill points are good, and then later the Paragon points, the Orbos is useless, and the potion is also not that impactful in the late game. So this is kind of nice early, but don't really rely on potions too much for the most part. But if you level a lot of different characters or if you want to start an alt or something like that, you want to change your strategy a little bit and you actually want to fully finish region by region instead. The reason for that is that you do have this shared renown progression on your account, but if you, for example, unlock renown 4 on one character and you start another character, you actually start at zero again. And in order to get those paragon points at the end, you will have to go through the entire Renown system again in that region on your second character. So you kind of want to finish it up region by region so you can you know, play your one character for a little bit, finish the entire Skulls Glen, for example, and then you start a second character and you finish the entire Fractured Peaks and Haruza as well, and maybe you start a third one and then you do Dry Steps and Cage is done. So if you're like an Altaholic, then this is the way to go because otherwise you will never finish your Renown anywhere. There are also some of the other in-game activities you can do. For example, the world bosses, they pop up here and there. So you can just go there, get a few legendaries. It's kind of nice to do. Nothing really crazy, but it can help you with some loot. There's also the Helltide. So I've already made a video about how and why to farm this. 
but in general this is a very useful end game activity to gear up you can use difficult souls that you get there to upgrade your items to uh, uh, rank 5 at the blacksmith and the jeweler and you can also reroll stats on the occultist so helltide in general at least here and there is quite worth it because of those forgotten souls that you can only get there so whenever you want to kind of take a break from the renown grind you can go there a little bit and sometimes you can even combine Helltide with doing side quests. It doesn't actually disable side quests in that area. So if you have some side quests around this area, you can kind of do both at the same time. And lastly, we have the Nightmare Dungeons. So you get those sigils here. In case you don't know, the first sigils that you acquire are from the Whispers. So you have to do a tree of Whisper objectives with the Grim Favors. And they will give you some of those sigils and then you can start blasting. And you have to do at least a tier 3 to unlock sigil crafting and salvaging. So either you grind your way up through those first Nightmare Dungeons or even better is you start Nightmare Dungeons when you are in Torment Difficulty. So if you go to Torment Difficulty, those Nightmare Sigils will start at level 21 because you have the Sacred here, this is 1 to 20, this is a Nightmare Difficulty and then you have Torment Difficulty 21 to 100. So that's what I did. I completely skipped Nightmare Dungeons in Nightmare Difficulty and I only started doing them in Torment Difficulty with tier 21. And like this, with the first run, I unlock the crafting, etc. And it's also just much more worth it doing those Nightmare Dungeons when you're doing a higher tier. If you want to try to level any kind of gliss on a character with those lower tier sigils in Nightmare, yeah, like you can probably completely forget about anything like below tier 10, I would say, in terms of leveling your glyphs. Doing something like 11 to 15 or 16 to 20 is probably all right if you don't quite feel ready for torment difficulty for those higher Nightmare sigils, which are also more difficult because they have more affixes and all that then yeah maybe farming this range here is kind of okay monsters in nightmare dungeons are 54 levels higher than the tier of the dungeon so this means that a tier 1 dungeon has level 55 monsters a tier 21 dungeon has level 75 monsters and generally you never want to fight monsters that are below the level in terms of xp gains this is really bad and you actually want to be slightly under leveled compared to the monsters so it's always best to run dungeons that are plus minus 50 levels below your character so that the monsters are slightly above you up to three levels so this means that if you want to level efficiently you can't really just stay on those easy tier 20 dungeons or so you have to move on to the tournament difficulty eventually after around level 70 and basically once you reach that point once you have done the second capstone dungeon and you are in tournament difficulty you will focus on those nine point dungeons quite a lot so you level up your glyphs you can level them to up to 21. They become five times as powerful as they were at the start. So glyphs actually just get a massive power boost from being leveled, especially at level 15. You have this breakpoint where you are the increase in radius. And then you can start filling out your paragons. You can start putting those glyphs and you can benefit from this massive power spike later. And from that point, it's basically smooth sailing all the way to level 100. But it is quite a long grind. So you can do those sniper dungeons over and over and over. Personally, I quite enjoy them. So for me, this was the main grind towards the end. So especially from like 90 to 100, I was almost entirely just running Nightmare Dungeons. As a solo player, this is the best XP. But uh, of course, there are other strategies for group players. You can research those dungeons and split farm dungeons and these kind of things. So if you want to speed it up, you can be multiple times faster than a solo player by, for example, running Champion's Demise. You might have seen this strategy from other players. So Champion's Demise is a dungeon down here in the Dry Steps near Jirandai. So this is what people were doing in groups. They were just farming this dungeon over and over because it has a layout with three different paths and you can spread out. You get zone-wide or instance-wide XP share from your party members and you repeat and just run a dungeon over and over. But this is obviously quite boring and you're also going to miss out on those glyph levels. If you want to run those 9 dungeons effectively, make sure that you do a tier that you can do kind of quickly. And if you are really powerful, you can also increase the tiers a little bit. So you get, do get more XP on higher tiers, but beyond being unleveled by 3 towards the monsters, you don't get a lot of extra XP. So it's not really worth it to go really high tiers if you slow down too much. So instead, always just try to run dungeons that are fast, effective, and maybe try to stack up some of those dungeons uh, to, I can run them back to back. So when you have multiple keys of the same one, sometimes I just, would just like sort them out a little bit. So for example, the Crusader's Cathedral is one I really like. I would just like, you know, save it here and maybe I find another one later and then I can run two or three back to back and chain them. So it reduces the turtle time. 
Some dungeons that I can recommend for XP farm are uh, the Blind Burrows in particular. So this is in, in Harvazar. So this one here can be a Nightmare dungeon. This is very nice here next to Sarbin Then we have Abandoned Mineworks, which is here in uh, near Tarsarak, down there in uh, Kajistan. Those have a massive monster density, especially with those spiders and spider hosts and all that stuff. I think they are pretty good for XP. But there are a bunch of other, as I've also grinded a lot. So I've done Crusader's Cathedral a lot. I like that one. There's also Witchwater down here in uh, Havazar. So this is near the uh, Vierish uh, waypoint. You can go there. So this one is also pretty nice if you get it. Then in Fracture Peaks, we have Morewood near Margrave. So I like that one as well. You have Champions Demise, which even as a solo player is like a really good dungeon. So this is here in the Dry Steps near Girondai. Uh, so whenever you get that, it's kind of nice. And then we have a few dungeons here in Scots Glen. So there's Raven Wilds, which is up here next to Braystag. And then we have Alderwood, which is next to Tirmer or uh, Callback. So those two dungeons are also pretty nice here in Scots Glen. And if you have uh, some extra leftover keys, maybe you can also do Sunken Ruins up here. So yeah, these are my favorites, at least for XP farm. Uh, I didn't like fully benchmark them, but I was looking at my XP gains and my time spent, you know, traveling and finishing a dungeon. And generally those seem to be the better ones. They are not necessarily the best ones to run if you just want to level your glyphs. So that list might change around a little bit because they're not necessarily fast, but they're kind of packed with a lot of monsters to farm XP. And that's also it for what you need to know, how you progress from 1 to 100 in an effective way. And then, of course, at level 100, you can start min-maxing your gear, you can farm more of those hell tides, you can do PvP, you can try Lilith, etc. So there's a bunch of stuff to do. For the most part, it's important to enjoy the journey. So even if this is like a very effective strategy, and for example, I recommend not doing so many side quests and maybe focusing your renown on all of the other things, it might not be something you enjoy. So you can also just do all the side quests if you want and do fewer dungeons or whatever. Or maybe you don't want to run those sniper dungeons all the time and your glyphs are going to be maxed anyway because you only use very few in your build. In any case, I hope this video helped answer some questions about how to progress and what to do and when. So, hope you enjoyed this one. I wish you good luck with the other four and see you guys next time.